I was trying to decide uh, which of these two to buy, and I was in a bit of a hurry. I ended up buying the top down one, uh, and uh, later uh, a bit of buyer's remorse crept in, and I thought I should get the other one. And before sending back the top down, I thought I'd just compare them. Um, there are quite a few videos online uh, describing uh, each of these and other related products uh, in some detail, going into how the uh, apps work and uh, and reviewing reviewing them in that way. But um, I didn't see anything really comparing the optical performance of, of them both. So I wanted to do that uh, specifically uh, for using them uh, for debugging PCBs, um, figuring out which parts of a circuit are dissipating, dissipating the most heat, which are overheating, chips that are shorted out, or whatever, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look. And here are the two products side by side. Uh, this is the Infrared T2S Plus. This is the Top Don TC001. And I think... Um, Build quality wise, probably the the top con, top don wins the day. Uh, this is the Infiniray, uh, no Infiray, uh, and it's all plastic parts, um, injection molded, obviously. Uh, only the um, USB C connector, little rubber lens cap. There's the lens itself, and as you can see, you can screw that in and out. So that's what you get from uh, Infiray. You get a little pouch, um, and it's, I mean, it's its a lot smaller than the Top Don. I'm not sure if that's an advantage. Uh, having a smaller pouch is slightly annoying because this is a bit harder to store the cables, but um, yeah, here's the Top Don uh, product. It's got a lot, a much sort of better look and feel to it. Um, it is uh, extruded and machined aluminium section that's been anodized, uh, so it feels a lot nicer. Um, and uh, but yeah, as you can see, fixed focus lens, which is obviously the the massive uh, advantage on the infrared. Um, as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger. Um, they could have used the opportunity to put a uh, quarter inch thread for a tripod mount on there. I think that would have been really helpful. Um, yeah, quite a lot more space in this product they could probably have fitted it in. Um, yeah, this one doesn't have it either. So yeah, that's probably uh, the only thing that, them, that, that I think is really missing. Um, but yeah, you've got a choice of slightly nicer fit and finish uh, <laughs> and a nicer pouch, but much worse optical performance. Um, or this one, which is, uh, I suppose, yeah, you've got to acknowledge the fact that this is nearly a hundred quid more expensive. So, I think I got this for about two fifty, and this for about three fifty. Uh, I'm sending this one back because I have no use for it really. Um, yeah, that's the deal. Uh, yeah, it's, the pouch with some more storage space is definitely helpful because you might want a couple of cables in there or different adapters or whatever. Um, this pouch is really only big enough for the actual device itself, but um, yeah, uh, that's a very that's a real nitpick, <laughs> really. Uh, this guy wins the day, I think. Cool. Uh, if you happen to care about depth, uh, the uh, infrared one's almost double the thickness of the other one. But what I really wanted to add was um, that this optic on the front here. I said it was all plastic. Actually, this outer ring is machined aluminium. Um, interesting lens. It's a single. It's a monocrystalline uh, germanium uh, alloy lens, in, according to the manual, which is interesting. I was expecting it to be um, zinc selenide or something like that, but it's not. Um, anyway, uh, one last thing to add is that the um, lens doesn't unscrew all the way, which is quite nice. So if you screw it all the way clockwise, um, I think you get about what. Relatively uh, smooth moving, a little bit stiff. It's got about one turn, just over one turn, and then it hits an end stop, which is quite good because it means you don't end up accidentally disassembling it, exposing the sensor to the dust, and so on. So, um, yeah, quite a nice detail there. 
so they have thought about it. You can interestingly, you can feel the lens uh, gets a lot stiffer towards this end of its travel and a lot looser towards the other end, but it doesn't fall apart, which is uh, what I was concerned about. So, if you happen to be worried about that, now you know. Okay, so straight off the bat, this video is slightly dumb. I uh, apologise. Um, I wasn't really planning to make a video about these cameras, uh, but sort of part way through messing around with them, I thought I would. Um, and I didn't really plan it, uh, so I didn't actually end up capturing uh, very much footage from the two cameras, particularly not the top down one. Um, most of the time I was really trying to make a decision uh, about the about which one I preferred, and I reached that decision pretty quickly, so I, I didn't really take um, all that much uh, footage from the uh, the top dot one, one in particular, but anyway, um, this image gives you the best idea of the uh, performance uh, of the top dot TC001. Uh, this PCB um, that's illuminated uh, in uh, in color is um, about a hundred mil high by about seventy mil wide or sixty mil wide, um, and you can see the amount of resolution that you get um, the sort of level of detail there um, those chips in the center that are um, emitting the most uh, or the, the, the chips that are hottest there are, the, are two uh, SOIC 8 packages uh, and then just below are two QFN packages that you'll see more of later on. Now those um, SOIC 8s, if you look very closely you can just tell that they have 8 legs so that's that's pretty much all the image tells you in terms of sort of spatial resolution. Um, you can more or less make out that, that, that they've got eight legs uh, and roughly how big they are. And that's about it. There's not much detail other than that. All right, this shows you the pretty outrageous optical performance of the uh, Infiray uh, TCS Plus. Um, the, it has the same resolution as the top don uh, TC, TC001. Uh, so I've got 256 by 192 pixels. Um, but the ability to focus the lens uh, makes it an entirely different tool uh, altogether. Um, it has an 8mm uh, focal length lens which uh, can be focused from infinity down to about a 30mm uh, or possibly slightly slightly closer still um, distance from a, from the surface um, so here you can see on the left in region R1 uh, there's a QFN uh, package which is a 4x4mm um, 16 pin uh, device um, it's an audio amp um, and you can see there it's illuminated pars partially with some daylight and obviously partially by its own its own um, black body uh, radiation because uh, you know obviously it's a thermal image so um, but there's there's no power running through it at the moment um, it's not dissipating any power um, and you can see that there's enough contrast in the um, maybe the emissivity of the uh, laser marking on the top of the chip or or maybe just the the way it's lit um, by the light from the window but it's it's you can quite clearly read the uh, the part number there, the fifteen eighty three uh, part number, which uh, yeah is is much less than a millimeter in height. Um, to give you an idea, that's probably about point six or point seven mil high text, uh, and you can even read the 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 date code and, and so on in the the row below, which is um, around half a mil. Um, the pitch of the pads um, is point six five mil, um, and you can see see them very clearly and you can even see some of the tracks coming out of them so yeah it's it's a really incredible uh image uh, and next door in region r2 um is another qfn package with the same pitch but it's got 24 legs uh, and it's a 5 by 5 mil uh, package uh, also part of this chipset pair um and yeah I'll, I'll turn on some current now and you'll be able to see them warm up ready go
So yeah, you can see them heating up there. The uh, R1 chip is uh, a bit hotter. So here are the two chips under visible light. Um, as you can see, they're fairly small. Uh, these were the two on the thermal image. Uh, the one on the left uh, is the slightly warmer of the two. Uh, and you can see that's my little fingernail there, so they're, they're pretty tiny. So that shows you there's really a world of difference between the two products. Uh, I know it wasn't completely clear, but those two QFN packages are the same two QFN packages that are in this image from the Topped On camera. Um, it's a different PCB, but they're the same two chips, and they're the two yellow squares that you can just see below the two SOIC 8 packages that are glowing brightly. Um, in the Topped On image, you can just about pick them out. They're just a handful of pixels. Whereas in the infrared image, you can count the legs, you can read the top code, they fill the frame. Uh, and that's the difference that you get by having a focusable lens. That, that variable focus lens on the infrared device really makes all the difference. Um, yeah. So that's all I wanted to say, really. Um, unless you really can't stretch to the extra 100 quid, there's absolutely no reason to buy the Topped On device. You definitely want to get the infrared device if you're interested in looking at PCBs. Maybe for other applications, if you're interested in, I don't know, um, looking at the insulation of your house or something, uh, perhaps you could get away without the adjustable focus lens, but there's no reason to because you can you can focus to infinity with that lens anyway. So yeah, really the uh, infrared product is superior uh, overall.